file permissions in Ubuntu Linux may be a little bit different than what you're used to under other operating systems. So if you've never had to deal with file permissions in a Unix or Linux system before, this might be completely uh, new information for you. So what I'm going to do is in this first video I'm going to talk about and explain file permissions giving you lots of examples and then in the following video I'll show you how to modify those permissions and, and change those permissions. But on the front end, I want you to have a good understanding of uh, how uh, file permissions work under Ubuntu Linux. And I want you to understand the file permission scheme before we jump in to actually changing things. So what I have on the screen here is a little bit of information about permissions in Ubuntu Linux. And what I'll do is I'll include this information in a document that can be downloaded from this course so that you can have this information to print out or save on your hard drive as a convenient piece uh, for reference. So you're not expected to memorize all of this right away, but the file permission scheme in Ubuntu Linux, uh, in Linux in general and Unix as well, is very intuitive. So once you understand how these file permissions operate, it's going to become second nature. You're really going to, to understand, I think, very quickly. Um, but in the beginning, I do know that it's helpful to have some quick reference sheets. And so I'll make this document available to you in the course. But if you look at the top of the screen, you'll see example file. And then underneath that, you see a hyphen, an R, a W, an X, followed by a bunch of hyphens and some more information. What I'm showing you there is the example, it's just an example of the output that you would get from issuing the ls command followed by the l option. Now we've talked about the ls command already for listing the directory contents. And it's still going to do that, but if you use the l option, you'll be invoking the long format, which is just a little more verbose. So you'll get a little more output and a little more information when you issue the command. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Well, I'll show you the difference. Here's ls on our home directory. You're familiar with this output. If I use the l or long option, here's what the output looks like. It's a little bit different, okay? we are getting information about the file permissions, the owner of the file, the group that owns the file, as well as the date and time that the file was last modified. And of course, it shows you the name of the file. Uh, that's the same as when you use the ls command without the l option. So again, if you look at the example file, which is no longer at the top of the screen, but uh, is there about in the middle of the screen. If you look at that example file that I put together, you can see a hyphen, rwx, hyphen, 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 hyphen. Okay, I'm going to explain to you what that means. It's very simple. Jump down to the output from LSL and notice that all of the files listed have a hyphen in the beginning except for our new directory. The new directory that's there in purple, that new directory has a D and that D stands for directory. So the first character in this scheme is going to tell us whether it is a regular file with a hyphen or a directory with a D. So there's the mystery of that first character unraveled. Now the next three characters are either going to be hyphens or they'll be R, W, or X. So those next three characters after the first characters, they're telling you the permissions for the owner of the file. Now who's the owner of the file? Look again at our example output. You can see on the example output after all of the permissions, after all of the hyphens, then you have a one, you'll see user and then group. So the first name after the number, in this case a one, is going to be the user, the name of the user that owns the file. And that will be followed by the name of the group that owns that file. Okay, so 
you can see for the files we listed in our home directory that Cody is the user that owns all of these files including and the new directory and Cody is the group which owns all of the files except the last one the test.txt file just to show you a little variation there I went ahead and made root the group that owns that file now again remember we'll be talking about how to change uh, all of this in the following video but right now I'm wanting you to understand what's happening here so the first character tells you it's either a regular file or it's a directory a regular file will have a hyphen the next three characters will tell you the permissions for the owner of the file in this case as we look at the uh, output here in our home directory Cody is the owner of all these files and you'll see some combination of either hyphens or R W and X it simply stands for R read W write and X execute so these three characters are telling you if I can read the file I being the owner of the file I Cody own the file and therefore with an R I can read that file now you can read a file and hopefully you understand intuitively the differences between reading writing and executing let me go ahead and break that down in case uh, there's any doubt read means that people can view the file or view the contents of the file or view the directory write means that uh, you can modify or change that file or that directory and execute means that you can execute the code in the file or you can execute the program if it's a program or in the case of a directory execute means that you are allowed to enter that directory so if I give the permissions like this the owner of the file will be able to read write and execute whatever file I am uh, modifying or whatever file I'm seeing here uh, since we're not modifying in this video whatever file I'm looking at the owner of the file is able to read write and execute that file the next three characters tell us what members of the group owner are allowed to do with that file so let's look at test.txt because it's owned by the root group if I give uh, RW and then a hyphen let's say that would mean that anyone who's in the root group would be able to both read and write the file but they couldn't execute it so if it's an executable or if it's a script or has code inside they could read the code and they could modify the code or change the code but they would not be able to execute or run the code or run the script or again if it were a program they wouldn't be able to execute that program if it were a directory they wouldn't be able to go into that directory and finally I think you're already probably getting the hang of this the final three digits tell us what all others can do with the file so in this case here I might do an R and then a hyphen hyphen and this would mean that everyone else so all other users could read the file but they would not be able to modify or change it and they wouldn't be able to execute any of the code contained in the files nor would they be able to enter into the directory if in fact this were a directory now remember this would signify that we are dealing with a directory this the hyphen in the beginning uh, tells us that it is in fact a file and not a directory so taking another look at our permissions here you can start to see how simple all of this is when we're giving permissions we we are telling the system that the owner of the file can I you know can read can write or can execute any combination that members of the group which owns the file can read write or execute any combination and that all others all other users anyone else can either read write 
or execute. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Now, the manner in which we express this is using um, binary. And in this case, uh, what, we, what we have, if you look at the very top of this file, we have read, write, and execute privileges represented by a 7. So 7 stands for read, write, and execute. Read and write without execute is a 6. And reading without the ability to modify and also the ability to execute is a 5. Uh, finally, you have uh, reading uh, only without the ability to write and execute as a 4, and I should have put this on there, but if you don't have the ability to read, write, or execute, you can guess what the number would be there, 0. You have 0 privileges. You cannot read, you cannot write, and you cannot execute. So looking down uh, below that, you'll see 777 equals read, write, and execute, read, write, and execute, read, write, and execute. Any file which is going to allow the user, uh, it's going to allow any the, 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 the group which owns the file and anyone else, the ability to read, write, and execute is going to have um, 777 permissions. That's how we'll represent the WRX or, or the <laughs> RWX, RWX, RWX. Instead of saying that, instead of dealing with that, uh, we will uh, later on, we will use chmod um, to change the permissions to 777. Okay? Um, now, again, if you want to see the example of the zero, you can see a 770 file. Uh, the owner of the file can read, write, and execute that file. Uh, anyone who is a part of the group that owns that file can read, write, and execute, and anyone else cannot. Anyone else does not have the ability to read, write, or execute. So I think that just about covers everything for now and uh, covers the basics of file permissions and understanding file permissions. Let's move on to actually modifying those permissions and see what that looks like in a uh, real setting.